There is a podcast about an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 200 years. Hello and welcome back to Could It Be? An Oak Island podcast. We are your hosts, Deidre and Dustin White. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. It's Oak Island interview day. Woo, woo. Woo-woo. All right, so we have a very, very special guest. We're bringing to you today one of the um, quartet the of quartet. Ar- archaeologists hanging out on or- uh, on Oak Island this season. Uh-huh. Um, it's he actually is uh, pure gold when we thinking about sound clips from the show. Oh yes. In fact, here is my favorite one of the season. Our our listeners to the podcast have heard this many times, so <laughs> let's play it now and then we'll bring him in. Oh yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it is Dr. Aaron Taylor. Yes. <laughs> to could it be an Oak Island podcast? Uh, wow. <laughs> Would you remember that you even said that? <laughs> uh I don't really recall saying that, but uh I know it was to Miriam and <clears throat> Miriam and I go way back. Uh, she was a student of mine, came to Cuba with me on two field schools. Uh, yeah, hot. You know, those were tough field schools, 40 degrees Celsius temperatures, um, you know, away from home. And uh, she was amazing down there. And they said, if I if I knew any female archaeologists who might be willing to come on the show, I immediately thought of her, gave her a call. And she said, uh, Oh, I don't know. It's TV. Um, can I think about it? And I said, yeah, take a couple of days. An hour later, she said, I'm in. Yes. And uh, we had we just we had a great banter in Cuba together. Like I was always leaving my book something. She'd be like, oh, God, Professor Taylor, here's your glasses. Here's your book. And just it was a <laughs> it was a good banter. And I thought she'd be great for the show. And I, I thought she was great for on the show. So. Oh, we we definitely thought so as well. Yes. Like, uh, she fit in perfectly. Yeah. So, yeah, she's been a lot of fun to watch on the show. We, that was one of the questions we we're going to ask at some point was how she got involved. And that's an awesome little story there. Um, yeah. So you guys went way back in. Um, so, you know, what's kind of funny then. It's like last season, uh, Dr. Spooner, mm-hmm. um, he kind of got you to the island, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, after he brought you to uh, the island, I'm thinking to myself, man, what what if Dr. Spooner is just bringing his friends to Oak Island so he can hang out with them, you know, during, <laughs> that, during like the uh, summertime? And then I'm yeah. thinking, wow, does that mean that Dr. Matt Lukeman is going to be uh, a, a regular figure on season nine because uh, uh, Dr. Spooner brought him in, right? And yeah. So like, oh, you're doing it too. You're bringing in your people. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Dr. Spooner, he is, I wish I asked him if he could come on. He, he, he was busy. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, he is one of the funniest people, you know, I don't know if it comes across on the, on the TV, but he is funny. Like what a character. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Like, you know what? We have this clip. I'm I'm just going to press it. Okay. This is Dr. Spooner. Holy crow. That's very important. (laughs) So, yeah. He's got little good one-liners oh, yes. all the time too, you know? So. Oh yeah. Yeah. When it's time to work, he's very focused, but uh, uh, when you're hanging out with him, he is a very funny guy. He yeah. actually won uh, last year. He won uh, teacher of the year award at Acadia university. So yeah. Yeah. Sweet. yeah. Congratulations we're lu- we're awesome. lucky to have him on the Island. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're lucky to have him on the Island too, because if he wasn't silver. there, what the, what the heck would uh, yeah. like? There might be a lot less going on on the island as far as uh, uh, this season and next season. So, um, yeah, yeah. So we 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 have a few questions for you, Doctor um, Taylor. Uh, can we call you Aaron? Please call me Aaron, please. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of work to get the doctor part, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not big. I'm not big on titles, so please. Really, you put a lot of work to earn it, so we wanted to make sure we at least. Did, it, did that first, uh, you know? thank you but <laughs> wait we've got to give them like a fun title like, like one of these times like i don't know i like steve's the royal cartographer mm-hmm. and dr spooner's the swamp doctor mm-hmm. so 
I mean, I'm still brewing on a name for you, but it, it's coming. It'll come when Deidre makes your trading cards someday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, okay, on trading cards by chance. Yeah, I've, I've seen them. Yeah. Very cool. She made them. So. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, she made them. All right. Um, yeah, so they're pretty, pretty sweet. All right. So we, we have a little section in our notes here that says getting to know you. And uh, we're just wondering. So do you live in Nova Scotia, I guess? Yes. Yeah, I'm from Ontario. Um, and I moved to Nova Scotia in 2004. I was a social worker in Toronto. And I got burned out. And I moved to Nova Scotia and found the works the same there as it is here, here as it is there. And so I said, you know what? Archaeology has always been a dream of mine, a passion of mine. And my wife said, well, it's now or never. So I went back to university and um, ended up getting my Ph.D. So, yeah, quite a quite a ride. Yeah. So it's never too late. Anyone out there who wants to change careers change paths uh you know it's Deidre, never too late Deidre. never too late mm. yeah, you're gonna be to... you're gonna come to cuba right Deirdre? that's right, that's right. <laughs> i just gotta convince dustin to you know man the house for a couple weeks i'll be fine in cuba all right <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as i know she's in good hands then we'll be fine yeah i can I'll... for myself <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> yeah all right so um when did you first learn about the Oak Island mystery? Well, my parents are from Nova Scotia. Um, so, and they they were, they were school teachers. So I'd spend my summers down in Nova Scotia and I'd heard about it. I remember as a boy watching um, the Leonard Nimoy episode, I forget what it was called mysteries or something. I, f I f forget what it was, but he did one on Oak Island and I was really intrigued. So, I've always known about Oak Island, um, but it wasn't until uh, Dr. Spooner invited me to come down that it actually went back on my radar because we don't know, like out in the archeology span community, we don't know much about Oak Island. You know, we're busy with our own projects and then every now and then you hear a little something about Oak Island, but you know, it's a private area. You can't just visit it. Um, so everyone knows about it, but it, People aren't thinking about it, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I wasn't expecting what what I saw on Oak Island. Um, like, it's a real. There's some real interesting things on there, things I've never seen before. You know, so it's a special place. That's for sure. Yeah, well, that, it's good to hear you say that. Yeah, we think it's a pretty special place too. Um, I, I heard about when I was a kid. Uh, I know I read a book. I don't remember what book. It wasn't Reader's Digest. I mean, I can tell you that, but it was uh, something, and it caught my attention. And I was really happy to see that a TV show got made out of it because mm -hmm. it's it's fun and a huge mystery. So yeah, yeah. And I I know you've made a lot of friends on the island. Looks like one of them's here and has a question for you oh, though. Who's that? Uh, Scott showed up. Scott Barlow. Scott likes Barlow. showing up, <laughs> and he says, "Question for Aaron: How many wings are too many wings?" <laughs> I need to know. What There's no you? such thing as too many wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, like what, what kind of wings are we talking? Are I, I like hot. Scott's not as tough as I am. He usually goes for the sweet and sour. So uh yeah, Thursday night Thursday nights are wing nights and a bunch of us go out and eat far too many wings. Yeah. yeah. So it's been confirmed. Uh, Scott's a bit of a wimp when it comes to his chicken oh! wings. Oh! <laughs> now he'll really never come up here with me. <laughs> I give him such a hard time. Poor no, guy. Scott's a good guy. <laughs> oh, Scott's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, I don't like hot either, Scott. It's fine. <laughs> Deidre does like the fire. You know, I like I like the... Spicy um, like me. Yeah, I like honey barbecue. <laughs> Fine. Mm -hmm. Or as Scott says, long live fellowship of the winged. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I couldn't yeah. let Scott get by without, you know, getting his question. Well, always got there's so many there. characters. They're like off camera, they're just as funny as on camera. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you put in these long days and it, it, you just need a laugh. And, you know, you have Scott and and uh and gary oh my god gary's funny he and i became very good friends we got similar senses of humor 
and uh, a couple times the producer would get angry with us because he'd come down and he'd find a nail and he'd be like, hold it up and he'd look at me and he'd get this smirk and then I'd have to describe it and he'd be laughing. And so we'd both start laughing. And then when you get, you can't stop laughing and then we'd, we'd stop and then we'd look up again and we'd burst out laughing and producer would be like, oh, okay, everyone take a 10 minute break. You know, it's just. <laughs> That's great. So, but it's, you know, you get letting off steam and you just, yeah. it's, you gotta have fun moments. Not everything has to be serious. And uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of laughs. It'd be, it'd be great if they showed a blooper reel. Cause, uh, oh my God. <laughs> and ask him for it for uh, a few seasons. We actually uh, uh, talked to Maddie a few weeks ago about it. And he says it doesn't sound like it's out of the question. Well, there's some, definitely some good material on those. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're we're looking forward to see that one day on drilling down. <laughs> All right, so um, now we know you a little bit better. We know where you're from and and what you do and stuff. Let's what talk, you do? Let's talk about some Oak Island stuff. And sure. we're going to start basically where you started this season on Lot 15. Yes. So Lot 15 was uh, real interesting. Um, at the beginning, it was a focus because they had found a map from Fred Nolan mm -hmm. that said there could be a tunnel that goes beneath uh, where that stone feature was found. And so um, at that point, we were introduced to you again because we had seen you through the last season. Uh, we were introduced to Liz Michaels and um, also Laird was there and David McGinnis. Uh, mm -hmm. McGinnis, mm -hmm. really fun to see. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, I don't know, just a little bit of an overview. Like how was working on Lot 15 with all the archeologists? That was uh, pretty kind of weird to see as a viewer because mm -hmm. we're like well we're only used to basically having layered and now right. we have like a, a plethora an army of, of uh, archaeologists they're Proud taking team. over you know yeah and i'm gonna have to press this button they're everywhere they're everywhere <laughs> as terry would say yeah, archaeologists are everywhere <laughs> yeah so i got called david at mcginnis got hired to do that job and he he phoned, he phoned me up because of COVID, my, all my field schools got canceled. So I had an opening and, and he said, uh, so they hired me to come for two weeks. Uh, just do that site and uh, two week job. And I said, great. So I showed up and, um, uh, you know, David, I know David outside of the show as well. He's a good friend of mine. Um, I always enjoy working with him. And, um, so I thought, yeah, it'd be great. Have fun for a couple of weeks, and uh, who, you know, who knows what could happen. Hmm. It's definitely an interesting site. Um, you know, nothing definitively has been um, concluded about it. Uh, I know we talk about it being a pied and tar kiln. I'm only seventy percent sure it is. You know, it's got to be something. It's human made. Um, it, it has two periods of occupation or of use based on the nails we found. Um, so looking at, looking at the evidence, it appears to be a pine tar kiln. It looks similar to the ones that they use in Scandinavia. Not so much that you go, oh, it's, it's a pine tar kiln, but enough elements that are similar. Um, you know, it would have been nice when we did analysis of the soils to find actual beads of pine tar, but we didn't. Um, so it, it was frustrating. Um, I mean, that's really all I can say. Um, David, that was his project. He can speak much more about it than I, I can. But yeah, after that, they just said, hey, Aaron, can you look at something else? And can you look at something else? And it turned into a whole season. So, yeah. Um, thankful for that because like we said earlier you're, you're pure gold yes <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> yeah, thank so, you um, yeah so um the pine tar kiln yeah you know if this was as early as they thought you know the 1500s ish or whatever it could have been I, I i don't know compared to the scandinavian um uh type that you're talking about or british or wh wherever but it could it was probably way more rudimentary because they didn't have all the right tools exact tools to build the stuff um you know at the time because they're doing it far from home is my thinking so i don't know yeah no i i agree with that 100 percent. think you need pine tar and if you're out of pine tar new, uh, new england had it so you either go to new england 
or Scandinavia or, you know, but if you need it, you need it. And there's no hardware stores. So you got to make your own. And yeah. I, I think probably that's what they did. Hmm. Well, resourceful people back in the day, huh? <laughs> right. It's got to do what you Yeah, do. it was something you'd have to know how to do. Well, it, yeah. they must have really needed it because it's, what it sounds like is that they used every single drop. They didn't leave one <laughs> drop. <laughs> like yeah. Because yeah, again. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, it, it looks like a pine tar kiln, but there's no pine tar. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an issue. So. But it, it's something, and we're open for ideas and theories. Um, you know, I'm happy to talk about uh, a viewer sent in a photo and changed my opinion of an artifact So, from the swamp. So, you know, if anyone has a better idea about what that Lot 15 thing is, I'm all ears. All right. Cool. One team, one dream here. <laughs> yep, yep. We're all a big Oak Island family. Everybody, there's so many people that watch this. So many people love the show. By the way, you know, that gets me to thinking, how does it feel knowing that on every Tuesday you got 3 million people tuning in to see what you're up to? And then I don't know, even know how many people in Canada watch it on Sundays, probably a couple million. Mm -hmm. And then a few million around the world. I mean, you're legit one of the most famous archaeologists in the entire world right now. You know, God, <laughs> uh, uh, my children keep me very humble. Um, children, I just. I just work hard. My theory is my life philosophy is work as hard as you can and have some fun. And mm -hmm. that's all I concentrated on, on Oak Island. I worked as hard as I possibly could. I was exhausted at the end of each day. And at the end of the day, some people are going to like me. Some people aren't going to like me. Um, but I, I like to have fun. I like to crack jokes and you know, I'm old. Like, when I'm young, I was really concerned about what everyone thought, but I know some people are going to like me and some aren't. So I just do the best I can and whatever happens, happens. Exactly. I, I totally get that feeling. I mean, especially when there's that many people watching you, you can't be everybody's cup of tea or yeah. pine tar, no. or whatever. <laughs> um, I'd be curious um, to know about the stone that you found in pine tar kiln the one the the yeah. kiln, and what your opinion is on if it was brought there um from a different site or what well it's funny because uh i i didn't know um the, about the history and and you know um that steve had pinned these and that these drilled stones are are potentially important to the story so i'm just excavating away and i see this drilled and it's packed so it's you know, it's not it, it's old style of of hole drilling and you wonder like what could it be for and all of a sudden you know um uh, steve got wind of it or someone else got wind of it and it's like oh my god oh my god there's a drilled stone and I'm like okay what what's going on and so then they explained to me the relevance of it and it's like oh okay cool you know and then it had a beveled edge to it and it looks like it's sort of meant to fit some other thing. So then we scoured the area looking for another piece. Um, we didn't find any, but you know, it's an intriguing stone. And um, you know, that the island, I know it's cliche to say, but there's just so many questions on that island. And when you think you've got it figured out, um, you find something like that or a stone road through a swamp, like, you know, yeah classic oak island classic <laughs> oak island you know rick says it all the time like more questions lead to more questions and he wants answers we all do <laughs> you know yeah, we all right. want answers yeah yeah well speaking of you know you just brought up the stone road i guess we should just go yeah, let's jump do into it that because that was the majority of the season you know that's uh it was something else. It was, it was completely <laughs> unexpected from, I guess, anybody. I guess the Oak Island interstate, is that the proper? <laughs> well, I remember it was a blistering hot day and I was just on the island, hadn't been there long. And I'm walking down the road where the cars drive and I look over and in this, in this tiny little rubber dinghy is <laughs> Dr. Spooner and Rick and they're, <laughs> and 
Dr. Spooner has, has his big pole and he's, you know, sticking it down, probing the swamp. And I'm going, what are they doing? You know? <laughs> and uh, then they call me down. I forget where I was. I might've been working at the ball site. I don't know. And they, they call me down and they're like, Aaron, what do you think of this? And, um, you know, it's clearly, it's got a width to it. It's got a length to it. And, uh, and you know, it's got definite edges, defined boundaries to it. And that doesn't always happen in nature. That seldom happens in nature. So, you know, you're like, wow, well, and they're like, are you up for taking a look? And I'm like, I'm up for anything. I love dirt, you know, <laughs> bring it on. And, uh, and so we, we drain the swamp. I know there's some questions about environmental protection. All the water that was drained was put into a holding pool. And then it was when we were finished, it was uh, the swamp was refilled with the same water. Mm. So, um, yeah, we followed all environmental guidelines. Um, so anyone was concerned about that. And so then when the water was drained, we just saw this big mud. Um, thing that had a bit of a shape to it and uh and we're so we decided we'll set up you can't screen it because it's not going to go through a sifter you know you for artifacts so usually you put your fill your bucket up put it in a sifter you shake it and dirt comes out and you're left with stones and artifacts but you can't you can't sift swamp muck so that was a logistical issue so we got a big wash table scott mm -hmm. got us water um and we had a hose and i think everyone took a turn on on the hose table charles and doug and scott and um just about jack everyone yeah what's what's that jack jack loves that kind of stuff jack was in there hard too he was down in the swamp with me you know and and so a bunch of us we go in fill these buckets and take them up to the wash table back and forth back and forth a couple people had a nasty nasty spills <laughs> um and you just just slugging away on it and uh eventually you started getting more and more dirt off and it started looking more and more like a a road or a slipway and then you're going what is going on like why would you build something this big um and i know there's talk about possibly being two islands and it might have been but there's still so many better places to bring a ship up, to unload things. Why would you pick this area? And then your mind starts going. So anyway, we're, we, we spent, I don't know how long cleaning it off. And, um, you know, we did that with trowels. Uh, Rick was down there on his hands and knees. Everyone was in there pitching in. And uh, it was hard work, but it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, you're all in, in it together. And you're all working as hard as you can. And, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. We only found a few artifacts. Um, and but but the big thing we found were were the were the cut stakes and the cribbing under the under the under the foundation of the of the stones to keep them from sinking down. And, you know, people I know you get lots of comments like, oh, God, they found a piece of wood. Well, <laughs> that, that was pretty big in this case um mm -hmm. it it showed us how they built it how it was intentionally built i've also heard people think that glaciers caused it and and the stone pathway were could have been glaciers and the stones clearly ruled that out this was a handmade feature uh we could date the pieces of wood and now the question was how old is it and why would you build it yeah, I mean, so I we're think still there. last season, I mean, clearly the, uh, as I call it, the swamp parking lot back there dating to the 1200s that was clearly on purpose, like, and we knew that was human made. The road is even more so, right? I mean, yeah. that road is mind blowing. Like when they do the drone shots of it, it's just like, like, you do, it's beautiful. You do, you do like mm -hmm. a triple take like what is that doing <laughs> like why is that there it's, it's it's incredible yeah yeah and and they you could see over time and i don't know how long it was but it sort of saddled back mm -hmm. and they filled okay. it they leveled it again with another course of larger stones 
And I've heard, I've read some comments about, well, how could a cart get over that? But there are carts in, in Fortress Lewisburg in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and they have these huge wheels and they'd have no problem getting over these, these stones. And, you know, you talk to Billy and Billy says, you know, this would have taken a lot of manpower to build, uh, would have taken a fair bit of time. And, you know, it wasn't built by fishermen. It wasn't built by farmers. So what's going on? And, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, Doug's been working hard looking in the archives and looking for documents. I mean, the British and the French, uh, they were, they loved their paperwork. They left paper trails for every project, every job. But we can find no paperwork for this stuff going on on Oak Island. So bizarre. <laughs> So what's I, going on? If it's a secret and you don't want people to know, you burn the evidence. <laughs> yeah. You burn That's the all. evidence. And you clean up after yourself. That was one thing that you noted in during the course of uh, uncovering that stone road is like, there's, you know, there's no artifacts Very just hanging little. out. Uh, what, where's all, the, where is, where's all the proof? Like, where's all the proof that people were here? Cause this was obviously made by people. Yeah. I mean, I've worked on sites with far less work that had gone on and, you find hundreds and hundreds of artifacts. Yeah, we found question. almost nothing. You know, some ox shoes, uh, some ox nails. So we know it's a path that's being used. But where are the drinking containers? Where are the eating containers? Where are the smoking pipes? The mm -hmm. the pipe ends. You find them littered all over sites. We didn't find one. That's just that's pretty incredible. So. Yeah, that's just, uh, you, you have a clip of um, them working in the oh, yeah. um, uh, Stone Road. Don't you? Before, before you play that, I do have a one quick question I wanted yeah, to get, uh, bring up uh, from a listener. Uh, Doreen Stroud asks, because this is relevant with talking about the stakes, mm -hmm. like the wood, wooden stakes that you found. Um, with, the, with that being dated, uh, can you also test to see what country it came from or was it locally made? You can you can do tests on it that will give you the species, and then if it's a rare exotic species, then you can match it with another one. Um, I'm not an expert on isotop isotopic analysis. Um, I know, I know, I know you can carbon date it. It's not. It has to be 50 years or older to do tree ring dating. And these were small, they, they weren't 50 years old. So all that we really had was carbon dating. Um, but we found a lot of them. And, uh, and we found them in, in, in important places. We found one at the very beginning of the road in the middle of it. Mm. Wow. And then all along the stone path, we were finding them only on the swamp side of, of the path. And <clears throat> just when you're like, I don't know what is this, is it? We'd find another one. And I know the stone path sort of doesn't look pretty. It's because it's been, you know, hundreds of years of heaving and thawing and, and freezing. And, and that's just really what, what that does. It, 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 it makes it look sort of scattered, but uh, I mean, the stakes are definitive. And in a couple of places there were stakes going, pieces of wood going under in the, in the swampier areas. So it was it was human made, and I, I believe it was connected to the stone feature mm -hmm. in, the, in the swamp. Well, just like even when we were talking to Tony before, like it gets so cold and it freezes, like even the the ice can move these big boulders over. Oh time. yeah, I surely would expect that those pieces of the stone, like road, well path, right? So we mm -hmm. call road the more intact part that really was yeah. in the and then the path what we've been seeing come up the side i mean i i'd be shocked if it was still fully intact the same way yeah but. well one thing that you noted early in the season was that since everything was kind of submerged in water um that it helped um well, so like, like the artifacts of... were really well preserved that yeah. were in the stone road because we know when it's an in an anaerobic environment, right? They're not going to deteriorate yeah. the same way. Do you find that that's been true? And that, so everything you're pulling, you've pulled out of there has been in really good condition? Uh, the pieces of wood, like for organic materials, yeah. Um, 
like the leather, uh, the pieces of wood. Uh, so you can sort of see the pieces that are above the water are missing, mm -hmm. but the pieces below are in that anaerobic environment and, uh, you know, they're beautifully preserved. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, de it definitely makes a difference where you find the artifacts. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, so do you have that clip of them finding the, the leather? Yes. Let's see check here. it out. So this is... Oh. What's that? I found a piece of leather strap oh. with notches in it. Wait, with notches? Oh yeah, girl. <laughs> that, that was actually Liz. It was, it was Liz. And I'm telling uh, you, okay. the gift that keeps on giving. Um, uh -huh. I, we were laughing because it sounded like you were like, Look, I found my leather strap. What did you find? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot of digging without finding anything. <laughs> so I was so happy. I thought it was modern when I first looked at it. Um, you know, I thought it might be a, a watch band because, you know, people have been on the island constant, continually, and you find a lot of modern stuff. Uh -huh. And you, if you get if you get caught up in everything being old and having to do with the treasure hunt then it blurs what you're finding and suddenly you just get blinders on and you're only seeing treasure so you gotta also remember there's lots of modern stuff we're finding as well and i thought it was <clears throat> um a modern watch strap or something and uh it was great uh one of the great things about the show is if they need a specialist they'll get a specialist and if they need someone to look at that leather, who's a leather leather expert, they get them. So that's it was great that they they took it to someone who who could actually identify it. Yeah, that's uh, Joe Landry, right? Yeah, the uh, bookbinder. Yeah, that was uh, pretty intense and pretty cool to see. Um, do you remember how uh, what it uh, what he said though? I don't remember how old did they say that it was. I know it was part of a, he thinks it's part of a, a book binding, like a yeah. strap across a book for, for possibly a ledger, a oh, book yeah, ledger. Uh, yeah. I can't recall the date. <clears throat> pretty neat though. Like, mm -hmm. um, pretty impressive. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, yeah. Are, you, are you planning on pulling up this map? 1724, I think for the leather strap. Oh, 1724? Or 25. Okay, I'm sorry, cool. this map I have is blurry. The one that's Yeah, she's looking at a map that Steve showed on one of the one last of the episodes of the season that shots. has like all the finds on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. so the, uh, the stone road and the stone pathway was just the gift that kept on giving though throughout the season because basically... Before the Stone Road was kind of discovered by, you know, the combination Spooner. of Spooner and Tony and Rick going out there and doing their things. Um, yeah. It looked like season eight was going to kind of focus heavily on the money pit. Um, maybe you, Liz, Laird, and maybe Miriam, I don't know, working over in lot 25 on the uh, ball property. And yeah. Island Theorist coming in to do some, you know, Skype and Zoom calls. But, um, you know, I don't know that that could have lasted a whole 25 episodes like it did, you know, if you didn't have this stone road, because this turned out to be something that was like huge and yeah. unexpected. So I'm thankful for Dr. Spooner. I'm thankful for Tony, Rick, yeah. you, Miriam, everybody that worked on that, because it literally was the gift that kept on giving all throughout the season. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the highlights of my archaeology career so far. Wow. You know, I've not seen something like that. Yeah. And, you know, you spend most of your time finding broken pieces of pottery or, you know, hearth features or, you know, you find some cool stuff, but you find a lot of the stuff that you find in other places. And, you know, yeah, seen it, seen it, seen it. So when you find something that you've never seen before, it's, it's exciting. I get excited. So. Well, I mean, to be fair, you did do plenty of this finding pottery and uh, hearth features just in the stone road. And so it was typical, but in a very unusual <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the cribbing, finding that underneath the stone road. And like, that seemed like <clears throat> it was a real aha moment, you know, of the season um, because, you know, it really told a bigger story, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, just just that this was well constructed. Uh, it wasn't just a, you know, a weekend job where, you know, you get a crew to throw some rocks down like this was engineered. It was well put together. I mean, it's been there for hundreds of years and uh, it's still function. It's still a functional roadway. You know, the path obviously is much different, but uh, um, yeah, it, it shows that they knew what they were doing. Um, I, so we also, the first time we saw you was in season seven, right? Mm -hmm. So the year before, and you had come out to look at this other anomaly that we've talked about, but then they brought you over to what is now dubbed the eye of the swamp. And mm -hmm really definitive and it seemed confident in the idea that it was a blue clay mine now i personally know nothing about mining blue clay nor <laughs> so do i <laughs> so what is what kind of things would stand out to say maybe that it was indeed a blue clay mine well glue blue clay um was important people needed it it was great for insulating windows and and you know it was like putty um and it was much better than it wasn't as gritty as as common clay that you find so it had its special purposes and and you don't find it in a lot of places so that's one idea i mean i'd like to get back there and do some more work on the eye um uh that was uh yeah, we didn't spend much time there. And in fact, that was one of my bigger blooper moments. Um, you know, I, I was, I wasn't used to be on TV. I was a little nervous. I was excited and I was trying to give answers. And, and right there, right near the eye of the swamp, um, Billy had dug this huge uh, hole and uh, it was filling with water. And Dr. Spooner got down into it and uh, he was looking at some rocks. And he's just like, Aaron, come here and take a look at this. So I take two steps, fall head first, go up to my shoulders in mud. <laughs> Dr. Spooner has to dig me out. And I'm just like going. So I get up and, and Marty's there and he's just everyone's looking at me going, oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm good. And then I try to continue. I try to be serious and, and tell him what I'm seeing. Uh, and I said to the camera guys, I said, oh, guys, this isn't going to make TV. And they're like. Oh, no, 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 don't. It's gold, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So when the episode showed, I was just like, I was just like, oh God, oh God, they're gonna show up, but they never did. So I was, I was very grateful. So um, oh, I, I think the eye is interesting, and uh, you know, it'd be great to do some more work. Uh, there's so much more work to do, and and we were just ran out of time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, it really seemed like really that was it right we thought that this road maybe not the the path wasn't as long or maybe went directly to the money pit or whatever we kept waiting for it to turn off or to go to the eye or whatever it was so how are you are you guys going to be able to just jump back to that come um, we how put we cover back up yeah. before you leave uh i left before uh, Billy started filling everything back in. I know of many of the sensitive areas, areas we deemed important. We put down garden mesh. Uh, some places we put down boards and then he, he buried it, which protects us over the winter. And when we come back, uh, we know that his bucket is gonna get to the wood, uh, the plywood, and it's not gonna damage the features. So we'll be able to get that off fairly quickly and um and and go back to work it shouldn't take that long hopefully so we we did protect areas man i mean how much plywood is down there that's worth a fortune right now oh i know that's that's the gold yeah right? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> might not be there now right <laughs> You know, one of my favorite, like some of my favorite moments of the season were people getting to be able to see the the stone road and what you guys had done there for the first time. Like uh, Craig showed up and you guys showed him the road and, you know, he's just like, whoa, you know, like super impressed. And then there's that one scene where Rick shows Marty the stone road for the mm -hmm. first time. And he's just like, wow. Right. Yeah. So, I remember so, that. Yeah. To me, those guys aren't like super easy to impress. And like they were like gobsmacked as gary would say right yeah. so it yeah. was 
it was uh that was one of my favorite parts of the whole season i think is them like being so in awe of seeing what you guys have done and uh you know how impressive uh the stone road was yeah was yeah i mean rick and marty they're they're two pretty cool customers and uh you know, it was great to see them have big smiles on their faces when they, you know, when Marty came and saw it. I mean, Rick was there from the beginning helping us. Um, but yeah, it was a special moment for sure. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, you really converted Rick into uh, wanting to be an archaeologist. Oh, he, yeah. He is Team he Trowel it. now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't take a trowel. He <laughs> would not take a trowel. And then uh, finally, near the end there, he's give me that trowel. And then you couldn't get it out of his hand. So, uh, yeah, I think once he, 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 you know, archaeology can be frustratingly slow. And if you don't understand it, uh, it can be like, oh, could you speed it up? But yeah. we we went slow and Rick did enough of it with us that he understood that by going slow, we were getting things we wouldn't otherwise. And by the end of it, Rick was a pro. Like he knew um, areas that needed to be excavated and how to do it. And he did it methodically and he found some amazing things at the end. So uh, yeah, yeah, Rick Rick yeah. definitely Converted. came over, came to the dark side. Yeah, it absolutely. Like the, that creamware bowl. Yeah, like so, uh, one of our listeners, Pat Wilson, asks, did they find the rest of it somewhere? You know, that creamware bowl. We didn't. Yeah. That you know, was, that, that, I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that was that was the last day of filming. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a good find yeah. at the end. That's why you uh, you waited for that moment, right? Mm -hmm. You have that clip? Yeah, oh, it was yeah. almost done. Oh, okay, like, God. Here, here's a clip. The, I mean, come on. You know <laughs> everybody loves it. All right, let's see it. <laughs> So this is uh sweet Jesus. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was another moment of the year. <laughs> I was I was running on fumes. Like Miriam and I were just pounding back coffee. And mm -hmm. I have never been so tired in my entire life. And again, you just get a little silly. And uh, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, though. Yeah, right. It, it was, a, was relatable. Yeah, that, that piece was pretty big. So, I mean, it was pretty I, cool to find. You, you don't find pieces that size. It was cool. And the base. So, by finding the base, we can tell what sort of um, uh, vessel that was. And, uh, I, you know, I want to go back and find all of it. And that's the fun part. Like, that's the thing that in archaeology... You don't find stuff and then go, oh, look, here, this is this, and this is this, and, and like you have to do on the show. And the producer said, we want you to think out loud. Archaeologists get qu very quiet when you're working because you're always analyzing. And then when you go back to the lab and clean everything up, that's when you start saying, okay, this is this, and it's this old, and this is... But the producers wanted you to say, this is a piece and and... At the beginning, I was so worried about being wrong. And then, you know, I, I, I relaxed and a couple pieces I did get wrong. I missed the dates by a few years. Um, but, you know, it happens and you make a mistake and you move on and you try and correct it. And so, yeah. It's all you can do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like viewers expect you just to be an encyclopedia of all artifacts. So, yeah, you know, geez. it's like if you did get yeah. something wrong, they're going to really hold your feet to the fire. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, nah, you're human. You know, it's just it is what it is. You know, you if, if you do have to, like, think out loud, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind, if you know, it might be a good uh, lead on it or a good idea or like almost right. But if it's if it's not, you know, I mean. They probably just won't use it in the show because you're obviously going to be doing some more research after the fact. Yeah. Right? That at the moment analysis, yeah. right? Because that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is what it is, and I get they're filming a show and they want it to be authentic. And you make mistakes in the field, like well, you're doing archaeology and you do it on the show too. So yeah, no, it's it's cool though. Like uh, I don't know, you have millions of people rooting you guys on every week, so. 
mean, yeah. And I mean, we root each other on, like we want each other to do well. And, uh, you know, there, you get a lot of lows, like dig in a smelly old swamp with bugs day in, day out and find nothing. Or poor Gary, you know, metal detecting a thousand blasting caps or whoever. And uh, so we're together in the lows and we're together in the highs. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's a, it's, a real, it's a real treasure hunt. It's not scripted. We don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, it's, it's nice that the viewers don't mind that we don't have a fancy ending. You know, that nothing's promised. And uh, I think that's the strength of the show. Um, we don't make stuff up. You know, and you see when we get frustrated and you see when we get happy. Yes, very authentic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very. And uh, I don't know, talking to a lot of you guys uh, doing interviews, we could totally tell that, too. So um, one thing that has happened in the past few months is um, Robert Clotworthy, mm -hmm. the uh, the narrator of The Curse of oh, yeah. He has like uh, he's doing some kind of fundraiser um, to... Uh, raise money for some uh, charity, uh, but he's like basically selling his scripts mm -hmm. and people have seen pictures of those scripts floating around. They're like, Oh, the show is scripted, but yeah. no, <clears throat> everything filmed is put together and then they send it to him so that he knows everything that happens. And then he has his lines. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's narrated. Funny. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's narrated, not scripted. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that yeah was, if it was scripted, I'd say a lot more <laughs> interesting <laughs> things. <laughs> well, you guys do great. Oh, you know, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, so you were probably, the, what, the first person to suggest that the stone path uh, might extend to the uplands or kind of veer off that well, way. And it seems that your intuition was right. Yeah, well... So when you, the stone road, the big, the big one, mm -hmm. if, when you leave that, it's a steep incline. And if you have a heavy cart, you're not going to get oxen pulling it. And in the mountainous areas, they do switchbacks, zigzags. Yep. So that's what I thought. Now we went left and we found the stone path leaving the, the stone road. It might also, it looks like it could also have a one going right. And that's an area I'd like to target the upcoming season. But I knew, I knew it, I knew it had to go somewhere. It, it's just not going to go all the way across to the other side of the island. Cause what's the point of building? You just bring your ship there. Right. So I kept saying, okay, it's got to hook up at some point. And week after week, it's just going and going. And they're like, when's it hooking up? When's it hooking up? Finally, we found one of the wooden stakes uh, more into the in front, sort of making an elbow. And then I said, I think I think it's turning, guys. I think it's turning, guys. And we all dumped, jumped in and and uh, it stopped going. So we tested it, tested on the other side of the stake. There was nothing there. So we found the elbow and the turn. And when we turned upland, that's when all the artifacts started being found yeah so that's really cool yeah. yeah so now where does it go um does it head back to the money pit uh so at the last few days we jumped up upland um and did a little bit of work but you know you need weeks more there and we had a day so okay. yeah. Do what you can do. yeah yeah but yeah I'm <laughs> excited yeah I mean, Absolutely. like you mentioned, the stakes, and we know that Fred Nolan found plenty of those within the swamp or around the island. I'm assuming their locations were marked, maybe. Or, I mean, I guess if you're trying to keep your stuff a secret. I bet Steve knows where they were. I bet you Steve would <laughs> know where they were. But that, like you mentioned, the stake being where it veered off, it makes sense if you're planning your route wherever the next yeah. is really what you're looking for is stakes to indicate where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve came down and he said, that's how we do it today. You know, this is the same building method. You stake out your road and that's what they did with this. I'm sure that's what he said. Cause I, I'm guessing he probably said this. I'll grab my GPS. 
get my GPS. <laughs> oh, yeah. Steve. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, we, we're yeah. big fans of Steve Guptill here. We give him a Oh, hug. me too. Did you, me too. Uh, did you happen to see the uh, Steve Guptill sea shanty that we uh, put out a couple weeks ago? I did. I that was that was something. Yeah, it was something. That <laughs> <laughs> no, was fun. It was, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure how he liked it. Teacher said that he said it was. He okay. said he liked it. Okay, well, that's good. Maybe he was saving your feelings. I don't Probably. Know. <laughs> I'm funny. sure Steve liked it. He's got a good sense of humor. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, there's something about all these guys. You guys got. Like even when you add people, like you are uh, a more recent addition. You know, we have um, actually not so many this um, year. Or there's some people that we're missing that have been on previous seasons. Like you know, some people that can't come from America, uh, like uh, Vanessa and uh -huh. you know the people that drilled the hole, the big holes, the big bore holes. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I mean, anybody that gets added to the to the fellowship at this point, I mean. It seems like they're welcomed with open arms and, you know, it just enhances everything, like from a viewer perspective. Yeah, I mean, that's nice to say. I mean, Rick is quite clear. If you can help me, you know, Rick's a serious guy. You know, if you can help me, I want you. If you can't help me, nothing personal, but I don't need you. So, you know, we all have a job and um, my job was to provide information to Rick. Like my job isn't to find the treasure. My job is to is to do the work, tell Rick what this thing is, how old I think it is. I hand that off to Doug and Charles and the historians, and then they try to fit it into um, you know, who was there during that period, what could it be? So it's I have to focus on not getting caught up in a treasure hunt. I just have to focus on what is this how old is it and what's the purpose mm -hmm. and yeah you you got to be focused otherwise you're not any help to anyone you're just yeah you're not providing valuable information rick needs to know and marty and craig they need to know how old this could this be a part of the treasure hunt or not you know and so that's what we're there to provide him with his information and and he can worry about the treasure and the historians can do their part. And, and uh, so that's what I just try and do is stay focused on, on just the task at hand. And that's enough for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it seems like Marty is more or less, you know, he'd really like to find the treasure. Mm -hmm. Craig is all about, Oh, I just want to know all the data from every piece of everything that I can. And Rick is more of like, it'd be nice to find the treasure, but to him, I think the real treasure is just knowing what happened over the course of the couple of centuries since uh, people started looking. He wants to, like, he wants to know what happened before then, then, and the whole story. Like, he wants the story. Yeah. More than anything, so. Yeah. And you guys provide a lot of uh, context for him, which, you know, and then he makes it to us at home and we get to enjoy an uh, awesome TV show. <laughs> Yeah, the history is 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 interesting. You know, it's got a good story, and uh, you know, if we don't find a treasure, I still think um, you know it's 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 a good way to learn about the history. And uh, I'm learning stuff, and uh, you know, and and yeah, Rick says that all the time. You know, there's a story here, and let's tell it. Yeah. And that's so that's what we try to do. Well, you guys did a real good job of it this season because. Nobody knew anything about the this uh, what your primary workplace this uh, past year of the uh, Stone Road. So, yeah, uh, it's been hiding for more than two hundred years. I mean, it's like it's that's insane. <laughs> well, the the stakes, you know, the stakes give it sixteen eighty to seventeen twenty. I want to say, you know. Speaking yeah. of stakes, stakes up. Oh, got another clip. Not quite as nice as the steak I had for dinner last night, but <laughs> but in archaeological circles, oh, I, guess I don't have a beef with this. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that that was one of the funnest days I had on the island. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, you got rid of him. Oh no! Hold on, bring oh, me back. Ear. There yeah, you were. Sorry. sorry. There I am. You. I clicked the wrong <laughs> button. You said that was one of the funny, funnest that, days you had on the island. That was one of the funnest days. Um, I, I, I didn't get to work very much with Marty. Um, okay. He was back and forth. Um, but he came down and 
myself and uh, two other guys, uh, we were digging away and Marty singing shanties and, you know, and, you know, we're just having a blast and, and he finds a stake and suddenly he's now he's really interested and I find one and another guy finds one. So we're keeping score and I think he found six of them. And so he was just loving it. You know, oh, archaeology is awesome. Well, cause we're finding <laughs> stuff. And then Rick comes down and, uh, and they have a good laugh and uh yeah that was a lot of fun that day yeah that's fun that's funny because he led the season with calling y'all the dreaded <laughs> archaeologists and he was outnumbered and now he's pro <laughs> yeah you guys no. made him fight yeah no marty marty's a lot of fun that's for sure yeah, yeah. he had, he gave us a call a couple yeah. months ago on our podcast hotline oh and, wow uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's what we said. <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he seems like a super cool guy. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk to him someday. Yeah, actually, talk to him. We need to go to Mari's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't drink wine, but I mean, she drinks I, a I, lot. So. I'll drink yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, yeah. no problem with that. Yeah, very cool. All right. So, one thing I, I can't um, not ask you because it was such a big deal a couple seasons ago. You weren't there at the time, but. They do talk about it every so often. Do you think there's a ship in the swamp? Do you think it's possible? Oak Island proved me wrong so many times that <laughs> I don't really want to say one way or the other. I, If I had to bet, I'd say no. But it's worth looking into. Um you know, if, if you're not, if you're on the fence, I say, if you're on the fence, you dig. And uh, there's only one way to figure that out. And let's get to the bottom of it. And once and for all, like, who wants to leave? So, who wants to leave that mystery? Not me. Yeah. No. You know, too big. It's too big a deal. If it is a ship, then, you know, that's a huge deal. <laughs> no, it, it, exactly. And who, okay, we didn't think there was a road in the swamp either. Exactly. Exactly. So let's dig it at that. The worst thing I get or whoever digs it, we get dirty. I mean, we need a major backhoe. Mm -hmm. So we dig a hole. And we don't find anything. We do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. dig it. Yeah, man. I would love to see you guys. Because, uh, okay, so like there was a couple instances where Billy was digging in the swamp and they had those like those planks, you know, there's a whole bunch of boards that they couldn't get out. And it was toward the end of the season. Yeah. I don't know how, where if it actually the was log. toward the end of the season. Yeah. But yeah. And it was like, wow, what, what's down there? Mm -hmm. So Yeah. No, I, I don't think you were with them when they, you were probably up in the uh, uplands or. Uh, I was working in the uplands. I heard a lot of yelling and <laughs> something was going on down there. And yeah. 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 That's Very hilarious. Cool. I, how many times are you like working on something and then all of a sudden you hear like random screaming from other parts <laughs> of the island and you know all the time. Going. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh my God, could it be? Did they did they, you know, and you get all excited and you know, and then you'll find out that it was nothing or you know, it was something cool, but it's not the treasure. But yeah, yeah, every I'm now and then. Yeah, all the time right <laughs> yeah. all right so um another thing so early in, or maybe in the middle of the season somewhere gary in the war room he's asking you know can we use our uh, billy's trowel over um in the swamp and you and miriam yeah. are like no you're not using <laughs> no. the trowel, the billy's trowel but no you no know, toward the end of the season we saw a lot of billy's trowel out in the swamp but it wasn't the stone road it was uh they were doing other stuff but mm -hmm. you know yeah, well, Fred Nolan did a lot of a lot of um, tapping, like a lot of pushing, mm. and you could see where it was disturbed, where he just pushed dirt over. Mm. So I knew exactly how far Billy could go, where well, he was getting that, and not the not the not not the feature, not the stone path. Mm -hmm. So and Billy, like uh, he's a surgeon. Like if you say Billy, I need an inch, he will give you an inch. And so I was very comfortable with him clearing the feature. You got to be very careful. And if you don't have an operator who knows what they're doing, then you can damage the stone path or the feet, whatever's going on. 
but Billy was awesome. And so we were able to get a lot of dirt off uh, that way instead of having to do with shovels. And that would have taken forever. Oh, um, man. Well, yeah. it's good to have uh, those exact measurements, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, Billy has like eagle eyes too because he's like oh. just keeping stuff up and he says, Oh, look in the bucket. There's some wood, <laughs> you know? And he's just like, he's like directing people from up there. And it's just like, Yeah. Oh, he doesn't miss anything. Yeah. 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 He's got it going on. Um, what? Uh, so, what's your take on some of the tools found near the swamp over the past couple of <clears throat> And so we have what, like the possible plumb bob, uh, the wood stone mason square. Right. Yeah. Pickaxes, chisels, swages, like they seem to be everywhere. <laughs> right. And obviously yeah. have a purpose for something. Yeah. Um, do you remember the long iron bar that, that was burned, that yeah. charcoal? Yeah. So Again, this is where I got a little bit too carried away with ship in the swamp or something in the swamp. And when they brought it to me, my mind went to, okay, what part of a ship is this? Because is this part of a ship? And so I thought, you know, it could be part of a ship. But one of you that had been burned, but one of your, uh, one of the really smart viewers uh, sent me a, a picture of a very similar shaped iron bar that was used uh, to hold a cooking pot over a fire. So, and that would give you why it was burned so much. Um, so I think that's probably what it was. And I was just trying to make it work with the ship idea. And I got that one wrong. So good on your viewer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's kind of like, um, uh... Laird and Steve have both said, you know, we're, we know that putting a lot of this stuff out there, that we're going to get something back from viewers a lot of times when we don't know what it is mm -hmm. or yeah, out there. I mean, how many of us go out and start researching immediately, kind of like the lipstick well, too. And like he was saying, mm -hmm. also he was saying, you know, the, the producers there saying, think out loud. Yeah. You know? So you're so going to think out loud. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, so, yeah. I don't blame you at all for that. You know, even they took it to Carmen Leg, and Carmen Leg said, "Yeah, it looks like a ring bolt." Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. Or Carmen Legs, he's got a lot of good information too. He's seen a lot. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's a lot of fun to have on the show too. Like, yeah. it would be cool to see him come out to the island more though. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but, but he's fun. Yeah, yeah. No, he's got a lot of a lot of information. Yeah. So. um yeah, he's a lot of fun. He's always uh, a good time when he's on the show. So, um, you want to talk about uh, the money pit? I know you don't do anything in the money pit, or I, I don't know. Do have you? Did you do any work in the money pit? I don't, we didn't see you out there, right? They don't let me near it. Nope. <laughs> yeah, well, so he's got his place. He's got to know. stay focused. We know. Yeah, so, I got my lane. Yeah, the thing. That, the thing I had written in my notes to to talk to you about. I said, all right. <clears throat> We know that archaeologists don't fo focus much on the money pit since it's so disturbed over the last 226 years, right? But how would you conduct operations of the money pit if you were given the chance? Uh, I think they're doing what they're doing, drilling down. Um, the only You'd only have two choices. You drill down or you do the big dig. You know, if that's where the money pit is. Maybe yeah. the money pit's not there. Oh, then a big dig would be a real waste, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's always that idea that, you know, maybe that's not where the money pit is. And could this road be something to do with it somewhere else? Uh, who knows? I don't know. But I think yeah. they're doing what they what they what you gotta do. Um as frustrating as it is. <clears throat> yeah, it could have yeah. been kind of a decoy even, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? I, I know that some of uh, the um, some theories are like, you know, it was a decoy and the money pits elsewhere. Or yes, yeah, it's, it's like a magician, right? You know, look over here while well, the real stuff goes on over there. So, right. yep, that's a common uh, side of hand, right? Yeah. So, um, are you ever surprised by anything they pull out of the money pit, like uh, things that you may have seen in the past come out? They pulled a bone out, right? 
yeah a human bone too i think that's yeah i think that's pretty substantial uh yeah. pretty substantial find um wood at at incredible depths i think is interesting um yeah 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 it's pretty crazy right. did, did you get to work with um laird and liz much over on lot 25 no i i spent a couple days there um but uh no laird and liz were the ball site and miriam and i were the swamp so yeah yeah huh i mean yeah that, i know that like when we talked to laird his um like doing lot 25 work is like his baby like that's like what he was born to do, I guess. <laughs> like it's his life goal yeah, to do that kind like of stuff. Expertise so, and... so it's cool that he got to like really dig in over there. We didn't see a whole ton of him on the show because they were busy showing us what you were doing over in the swamp. Mm -hmm. But um Yeah, no, Laird's that that's an amazing site. Um, you know, it's important for Nova Scotian history, regardless of the treasure hunt. And it, you know, could very well have a lot to do with the tre treasure and the treasure hunt. Um, I mean, it's beautiful there. I spent a couple days there and you find lots of stuff and it's peaceful and, you know, you're in the trees and you have a nice cool breeze. And again, you find lots of really cool stuff. And then you go down to the swamp and it's hot <laughs> and there's bugs and it smells really bad. <laughs> Well, so, I mean, Larry's been there since what season four, so I guess he feels like he's done his time. He can take the tranquil. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, so uh, you know, there were some interesting things found by Gary in the um, in the swamp with your guys' supervision, or um, you know, near the Stone Road area. Uh, something that was kind of cool is that they kept teasing us all season with was this. Um, golden knob that turned out Gold to be colored brass. knob <laughs> yeah but i mean like that was such a like whoa what did he find and then mm -hmm. i think it was was it layered he's like well don't get so excited over yeah. this gary it's, yeah it's cool but it might not be as cool as you think it is <laughs> yeah yeah it's not gold but it still probably came from a high-end piece of furniture mm -hmm. a dresser or something um cool. you know so that makes it a little interesting you know what is what is a dresser that would have this as a knob on it doing in the swamp yeah it's it's all bizarre it's yeah it's bizarre how bizarre how bizarre <laughs> <laughs> i just can't help myself uh let's see here <laughs> all right do we get into the questions from the listeners now yeah we can do a couple of those sweet all right so um Thanks for uh, hanging out with us uh, and uh, answering our questions. But now here's some listener questions from uh, from some peeps. So let's some see. Peeps. Yeah, well, there are peeps. All right, G James Shoemaker asks, um, "Who do you think? Who do you think built the cobblestone road or the stone road? And what evidence has been seen to support that theory?" So you got two options: British or French. I would say probably British, but just because we found uh, ceramics, British ceramics on the upland area, yeah, mm -hmm. um, I found a uh, a piece of gun flint, um, and it was mm -hmm. gray. And the French gun flint, not always, but often has a bit of a yellow hue to it. So. Based on this evidence, again, I, I wouldn't bet my house on e on either way, but I I believe it was the British. Okay. Um, you know, speaking of the gunflint, that that was one of in particular one of your favorite moments from it? Aaron this season. It was. Do you have proof of that? I do have proof of oh, it. Let's take a look at something. A lot of getting up and down in archaeology. Yep. <laughs> I'm there with you, Doug. Doug Crawl has rejoined Rick Lagina and archaeologists Miriam Amaralt and Dr. Aaron Taylor to continue investigating the stone pathway extending out of the northeastern border of the swamp. About 100 years ago, the dig site director would just sit in a chair 
and people would just bring him things. Oh, sounds like a good position to have. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, do you want to take a look at this? All right, so that's one of my, that's probably my one, top one, top two moment of the season because it was so funny that you said, um, yeah, they just bring the archaeology uh, director all of the uh, artifacts to look at. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, right, not happening. Then immediately she does it. She brings <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't. I was on my hands and knees. I wasn't sitting up in a nice chair, look, oh. o- looking over the site and having my tea and people bring me stuff. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and that and that's exactly why I asked Miriam to come on the on the show because she doesn't put up with anything and she like back down digging and that's what I love about Miriam. She doesn't matter who you are, what title you have. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was great. It was great watching her, you know, boss Rick around a little bit. And I was like, you go, girl. I was wearing her. Oh, yeah. And- yeah. Oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to tell you, Aaron, we play that probably. Oh, oh God. <laughs> in our podcast, or we do Oak Island trivia on Monday nights, or mm-hmm. we do. Um, on when the season's going, we do an Oak Island pregame for um, so like we do a live stream an hour before the air, show airs on the East Coast in the United States, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, we p- press that button three or four times because it's just it's so good. <laughs> well, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but like as soon as we went live, even uh, there was like a bunch of people that were like, "Oh yeah, girl," and like in the chat. So, oh, that's know, funny. <laughs> That's, That's um, too funny. a trending hashtag for you now. Um, <clears throat> it's so good. All right. You got the next one? Oh, <laughs> this one? From Boki. From Boki. Boki wants to know what the pottery tastes like. Oh, yes. That is an actual thing that we do. Um, oh, we know. It, oh, we know, it, actually. It tasted swampy. That's what it tasted like. <laughs> Uh, It's funny. I I remember I was doing a public dig and uh, people who who do my public digs, you get all age ranges. And this elderly woman um, who's great, tough as nails. um, So I I was talking to them and she was sort of, you know, traveling a little bit, listening and saying, you know, how to identify things. I said, and, you know, when you have, have coarse earthenware, you put your tongue on it and if it's coarse or somewhere, it sticks. If it's stoneware, it's less it's less coarse and your tongue won't stick. So about 15 minutes later, we're back working away. And I look over and this lady's like putting her tongue against a nail. I'm like, <laughs> what? Oh, no. what are you doing? And she said, like, I thought you were supposed to like lick things. I was like, not everything. <laughs> Just this. <laughs> Oh, so that man. was a that was a funny moment. She was she had, she had a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know how many things she licked before I uh intervened. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, oh, we, had, we had a great laugh about that. Yeah. She just missed a couple of crucial words, you know, as you're explaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's how I listen. Yeah. It's no <laughs> yeah, actually it this is our last clip we'll share with you, but it definitely was a favorite. Where, Aaron? I would say I'm fairly confident it is. It's got some darkness on the rim, but that could be burning. So I'm quite confident it is, but let me try the old lick test and see if my tongue sticks to it, and that's an indication that it's earthenware. Okay, man. <laughs> There is some sticking. So I'm pretty sure it's earthenware, but we'll get it cleaned up and let Laird take a look at it. But this is quite crude. It's quite crude. Yeah, it's quite crude, crude. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also probably brackish. That's how they really <sighs> describe all that swamp water. Yeah, I'm sure I have a great immune system from digging in the dirt for this long. like. I don't think any of that stuff's going to get me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right yeah. Rick. Uh, but yeah. Oh, Rick's not afraid of anything. <sighs> Doesn't seem like it, no. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Nope. Yeah, so uh, we got some questions from a listener, Barb Wright. So, hey, Barb, what's up? Uh, we've got, uh, so how did you feel when you were first invited to uh, Oak Island? And um, are you surprised by what you and others have found uh, during the past season? So I guess we've already um, talked about some of that. You were surprised about a lot of it. So, um, yeah, whatever you want to say about that. Uh, I did, Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I know if Dr. Spooner's involved, it's not a half-ass thing. Uh, there's some serious stuff going on. So when he asked me to come, <clears throat> um, I was relieved because I didn't know much about the show. I didn't know if it was just a made up thing um, and how how sort of Disneyland it was like. I, I didn't know. I, I didn't watch the show. So but when Ian said, you know, I've been doing some work on on the Oak Island and would you be interested coming down for just a day? I said, all right. So I took a deep breath and I went down and met everyone and there's serious people on here like they're seriously doing work uh it's not pretend it's not made up uh and the only thing is it's got camera crews so i was relieved and then i was comfortable jumping in and doing what i could do and um i honestly thought it was a one-shot deal um so that's that's what I, my first impression was and just how professional people were and um so then i was like okay i can do this um you know you always like worry about your career and how you're going to be perceived and okay. you know if it's if it's just a silly made up nonsensical thing then you know your career could get tarnished but when i met people and saw what they were doing and and that they were real scientists and real people doing you know uh legitimate work then I could relax and become a part of it. And I, again, I thought it was a one shot deal. And, um, I, I think that answers your, the question. Uh, what was there a, a second part to it or. Uh, it was just, um, what are, how surprised you were by some of the things that you found. Very, very, again, I, things I've never seen before. So, uh, and that's why it was so fun. I mean, getting up like i get up at five o'clock in the morning um and we'd start filming at 7 30 and often i'd be leaving the island at 6 30. and um if it wasn't something that i was interested in i would have a hard time doing it but i was excited to get back every day and so five o'clock wasn't as painful as it could have been i mean if you're finding nothing or you're not or you're working on a site that's not interesting five o'clock hurts but when you're excited it's not so bad <laughs> <laughs> those long hours aren't so bad <clears throat> yeah the one shot and then you thought it was going to be only two weeks and, and now look at you <laughs> yeah maybe i'll be back i don't know yeah so sometimes you just end up uh neck deep in the swamp muck sounds like the swamp sometimes doctor. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one swamp doctor already. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay, what else do we got? How about a question from Suzanne Locke? Uh, we've got, uh, how do you explain why um, when you guys find the small pieces of broken pottery, you don't find all the pieces of the same broken plate or bowl nearby? Why would someone discard just one or two shards? Well... <laughs> The area was so disturbed uh, with natural processes, uh, rain, water. It's there for hundreds of years. Things just get moved around. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and you find uh, almost intact, uh, broken, but a whole piece together. So you do find that. Um, interesting when we went to the uplands and we found such a diversity of artifacts it was almost like what we call a midden, so a garbage dump. And you can sort of think about that. If you're dumping your garbage and it's all treed, but you have one area where there's no trees because there was a road there at some time, a point, you go down and it's easy to 
and there's no tree, so you dump your garbage there, maybe. But mm -hmm. we found a lot of diverse artifacts at that one spot. And that brings me back, just we, we go back a second to the to the row, the stone path. And I believe there was probably two um, periods of occupation because we have we have the stakes, which are clearly marking it 1680 to 1720, 30. Mm -hmm. And then we're finding ceramics british ceramics that got come in at six at 1760s 70s 80s 90s so there's a period prior to that where it was used and then no artifacts in between those those dates and then after 1760 we get the artifacts did that make sense yeah yeah that, that hearing that kind of thing probably makes um <clears throat> the hair on the back of Rick's neck stand up. Cause he's like, Oh yeah, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that somebody was here in the, you know, 1600s, uh, hiding something and they hit it. Then they went away and then, you know, people came to do other things and they eventually looked for it, you know? And yeah. so not, not just Rick, like Charles, like Doug, like Paul Troutman, yeah. all these guys that are the, the researchers that are so invested in the treasure hunt itself. They probably love hearing stuff like that. Yeah. Well, well, how else do you explain it, right? You follow the artifacts. The artifacts tell the story, and sometimes it's a good story, and sometimes it's a bad one, but you just follow the artifacts. And uh, that's my guess at this point that this was two occupations. Very cool. Yeah, so, like, if, if they weren't finding much of anything, if uh, the <laughs> cast wasn't so good, the show wouldn't last, you know, like mm -hmm. people get real bored and just turn it off. So there's a lot of magic going on. If there, even if there's no treasure to be found, like there's so much, uh, like I said, just magic happening as far as like finding cool old things, um, the, the history of all the things, and then all the people there that are now banding together with this goal of figuring out what the island was used for in the past. So well, that's nice to hear. I, I really uh, like hearing that because just because I get excited about things, like I have a lot of friends who when I start talking, talking archaeology, you can see their eyes start to glaze over and they, they yawn and they feign interest. And so I get it. It's not for everybody. Um, but it's nice that, you know, that things that I find interesting, other people do as well. And I think it's a really cool story. And um, I'm glad that there are other people who think that it's cool as well. Yeah. I think a few million other people think it's also cool. So yeah, well, yeah that's you need, great. You need more friends like Deidre then. Cause like, if you were you to talk more to her, friends like Deidre. If you talk <laughs> her about archeology, she'd be like hanging on. I thought we were friends. We are. We're BFFs. We go way back. You don't know. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying like in, in your, like, uh, you know, that you would hang out with and you He'd know, hang out with me. What are you I'm saying? I'm talking about, you don't live in Nova Scotia though. Okay. Oh, maybe that could be fixed. <laughs> well, I hope you call it guys come and visit. I know it's a bit of a drive, but <laughs> it's a little bit of a drive. We had tickets and we were coming up in 2019 no, and 2020. then May, 2020, we were supposed May. to be there. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Wow. It's okay. As soon as it opens back up, we're there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah. Give me a call and I'll give you a tour. Yeah. Well, we That's what we're talking about. I, hey, as soon you know as what? we can get over. The podcast work. Let's turn it off. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was our goal. The <laughs> podcast has done its job. <laughs> yeah, we're closing up shop. Now. That's, that was it. No. That's funny. Oh, no. you, guys are, you guys are funny. Thank you. We try. Well, you know, like you said, if you can't have fun along the way, then what What's is What's the point? point? Come there on. Ain't, there ain't no point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so um, we only got a few questions left, and then uh, we'll let you get on with your day. But with thanks your so, life, yeah, you know. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. But um, not at all. I I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. 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 We we definitely did too. And like we can't. Uh, you know, now that we have the invitation, we can't wait to meet you someday. <laughs> yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. So uh, Jack Campbell, you might know him from the Curse of Oak Island and beyond. Uh -huh. He had a question, and he was wondering if you're still on lockdown in Nova Scotia. And how that's going to affect your work? We are. Um, we've been for two and a half weeks now. So my kids are homeschooling. That's mm -hmm. lovely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They, they hog the bandwidth. So <laughs> right now you can't leave your county. Um, 
so it really yeah i'm not i'm still working on a couple old reports but there's no digging going on um our numbers are going back down so that's good um and hopefully in a couple more weeks uh it'll open back up um the premier of our province has done a really good job like he doesn't mess around the second the numbers go up he shuts it right down and uh that's why I've, compared to the rest of canada nova scotia and the maritime provinces we've had it so easy like except for having to wear masks you wouldn't even know there was a virus everything was open all restaurants bars uh sporting events and it was just three weeks ago when we had this outbreak and in three weeks we went from barely even noticing it to completely shut down so i'm hoping where our numbers are now and where we're trending in another two weeks two to three weeks um we'll be back down to where we can open up again but we got to be patient yeah yeah fingers crossed for you guys yeah uh, you know there's uh there's work on an island to be done but not just that just you know everybody you know like, yeah. Just, yeah 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 for sure um julie goldsworth has a question um have you ever had tv cameras recording your work before uh in cuba um the cuban national television came and they filmed us a, a few times uh but that was for a couple hours a few times um nothing like this like i get mic'd at 7 30 i'm on the site 20 to 8 where the cameras start rolling and you get an hour for lunch but other than that you're filmed and audio recorded the whole day and it, it takes a lot to get used to and that's why i gotta commend miriam miriam's only 22 years old like you know have and and liz like they're they're not seasoned vets who've been on tv a bunch of times and i think they, they were, did really really well and uh you know and and it's stressful having a camera in your face the whole day picking up everything you're saying and uh so my hats off to both of them um they were they were amazing and uh it, it's not something that's normal um you know imagine your your work or anyone out there listening imagine going to work and the second you step through the door there's a camera and you're on video on you're on audio and they're recording everything you do um so it's it's a strange thing you sort of get used to it sort of um and you just do the best you can i mean that's normal if you're an actor but if you're just an archaeologist or yeah, sorry not yeah. just archaeologist, but if you're an archaeologist going to do your work mm -hmm. at a dig site or whatever you know that's not normal yeah. so yeah props to them i know it doesn't matter how old they are i know that like for they're, anybody yeah but they're already role models for someone like uh, like us like yeah. like we look up to them and we look up to you because we're like wow look at you guys do that cool work that nobody else gets to do mm -hmm. and you're what you do is amazing and i just oh, thank you TV. Mm -hmm. i love that it's captured for tv <laughs> yeah and i hope there's a lot of girls out there young girls out there seeing miriam really neat thing in nova scotia is there are more professional archaeologists that are that are women than men that's great. I heard that's because women are better th at digging up the past. on Facebook. My bad. Okay? The money pit <laughs> is going to be where the women's memorial is because we know how to find things. That's right. There you go. So there you go. we know. Tenacious. Know. Yeah, you're tough. That's right. That's right. You're All good right, at so handling that. disappointment. <laughs> 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 She's looking at me like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, um, so let's see. We got like two more questions. Okay. Galia sure. Heller. What's up, Galia? Um, she asks, how does your work on Oak Island with um, your, you, with the, sorry, how does the work on Oak Island with unique discoveries compare with other digs you have done and where you've worked? And um, have you had, uh, have been Whoa. a more expected discovery? Yeah, you know, I didn't edit the question beforehand. My bad, Galia. Uh, but how does your work on Oak Island compare with other places you've done? There you go. How about that? There you go. <laughs> um, well, so in Cuba, I work on a, a plantation that had enslaved uh, 450 Africans, men, women, and children. Wow. So it's it's got a heaviness to it. Um, 
you know, and 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 it's a lot more serious. And uh, I I think it's very important work that we do there, uh, giving voice to these people who, you know, spent their whole lives on this plantation. Um, you know, every site is different. I've done a lot of pre-contact sites, um, and they're really interesting. Um, old things like 4,000, 5,000 year old objects. Um, and, you know, you have to give them a lot of respect. Um, you're working with First Nations communities. Yeah. Um, so a- a every site is different. Uh, I bring the, my same methodology to Oak Island that I use everywhere else. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm on a treasure hunt. You know, what kid, you know, what kid doesn't want to go on a treasure hunt? Every right. kid does. And here I'm actually on a treasure hunt, you know? So it, it, it's, it's, the hunt. it's the biggest treasure hunt that the world's ever seen. So. Yeah. So if you can't have fun and, you know, so it, every site is different and every site has its challenges. And uh, I don't know if there's one site I enjoy more than the other. Um, yeah, that's cool. It's fair. Enjoy them differently. Enjoy them differently. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of air, times I've dug and found nothing. Thing. I don't really love those ones, but <laughs> we won't tell. Yeah, you know, no. you know. So today, before we we uh, chatted with you, we actually were watching Indiana Jones. <laughs> like, uh, all, like uh, I had to turn off the third one because it was uh, time to come talk to you. But mm-hmm. um, Indiana Jones, he said, uh, like he's talking to his classroom, and he says, um, "Archaeology is about uh, finding the facts, not finding truth." Deep. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the first one's more of a documentary. It's really how we live and, and work. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you just follow the evidence and you can get in trouble if you overreach the evidence, you know, and um, it's okay to say, I don't know. Um, you do the best you can. Archaeology is interpretive. You're interpreting what you're finding. And one person can interpret one thing and another can interpret another thing as long as you're keep an open mind and you don't let your ego get involved and you can can say okay i was wrong for me it's always the best idea wins i don't care if it comes from a student a grizzled professor best idea wins and you got to take your ego out of it because in archaeology it can humble you um you know it can really humble you and you know you write a report and you can get you know, it's peer reviewed and you can have someone say, oh, nope, that's not correct. So as long as you, you keep an open mind and you follow the evidence and you don't try to overreach what you're seeing, then then that's how you keep from getting in trouble. Right on. Well, for our last <laughs> listener question, uh, we have one from Tom Burns. And he said, <clears throat> if you were going to pick a location to explore on or off Oak Island, which is not currently being examined that you think could provide a major piece to the puzzle, where would it be and why? A piece to the where on the planet, what I dig that might give us more evidence about Oak Island. It's just somewhere that's not either being worked on on the island or off the island. Where do you think you would explore? That has to do with the treasure hunt. Yes. Ooh, um, uh, that's a great question. I I don't know. I don't. What? <laughs> I've <been> deep. <laughs> yeah, I I I don't have a clue where I'd start. Maybe maybe Britain, uh, since I think evidence is leaning towards the British. But it's a great question. I've never thought of that. That that lead cross looks an awful lot. <clears throat> like uh, that carving in uh, Dome Dome France. France. (laughs) Yeah. So there, that's where I'm picking. Dome France. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Of the dome, guys. (laughs) Right on. Well, fantastic. Since we're wrapping up here, did you have anything else you wanted to add? You? Nope. Before I... I, I, I'm I'm just happy that you took the time to hang out with us. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Not at all. My pleasure. Can I make a pitch? Just a, a... 30 pitch second play. pitch. Do um, it. I know you know, but for your viewers, I run a public program in Cuba as well. We do it every February. We go for two weeks. 
You don't need any experience. We have all the gear. Um, and I've had people as young as 14 digging right beside someone who is 81. So obviously this past year was canceled because of COVID, but we're gearing up to go next February, have 12 spots. So if you're interested in going, uh, send me a, uh, send me a, send me an email or message me on Facebook and, um, we'll know if we're going for sure by the end of the summer and I'll have all the fees listed and everything like that. So thank you for letting me give that little pitch. It's run through St. Mary's University here in Halifax. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, we yeah. see them all the time on the show. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, super cool. And uh, yeah, D I think Deidre is definitely Oh, I'm with sold. You. I'm in. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. February, let's do this. Let's do it. I could, I could, how long is it? Is it like a week or two or? Two weeks. Two weeks. Americans can participate. It's an educational tour, so Americans can can participate in the in this activity. I guess I could probably watch the kids and let you do that. Uh, I'll have cool. to be working on a tan all the way up to February, or else I will just like my <laughs> burn off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, the last thing I wanted to kind of say here is that you know when I was reviewing the season to pull up. Um, all my uh, notes and stuff about what you um, were doing out on the Island. I noticed that most of my notes said, um, you know, like Rick meets with Dr. Aaron Taylor to get the lowdown on what's happening and that, or Marty or Craig, or, you know, like I have a lot of notes where it specifically says they come to you to get the answers for whatever you're working on, you know, in the swamp or whatever. Uh -huh. And so um, I just thought that was really cool, you know, cause like, I, I don't know. Um, he, he feels like the captain of the swamp yeah, to me, yeah, you know? Yeah. So like, it just, it's just, it was funny to like go through my notes for the whole season and just see that over and over and just means that you're a super important part of the, uh, of the hunt and well, thank you. And the crew. And I um, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Th thank you. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything else, babe? Yeah. And lastly, like I uh, like to ask anybody, is there anything that you, wish that listeners um anybody watchers of the show knew or that they don't know or that you hear a lot and you'd like to share i, I just want to give props out to the uh camera guys they they carry around a heavy camera all day long climbing up banks into you know and funny Oh my God, some of them are funny. And, you know, no complaining. They're standing there waist deep in muck trying to get the photo. And they do that every single day. So I don't know how they do it. Um, my hats are off to the camera guys and, you know, getting those amazing shots. And uh, they're unbelievable to work with. So we're very lucky to have those guys. Yeah, they're so. uh, magic makers, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the things they do to get a shot, like they'll lie down in the swamp. They'll, you know, whatever it takes to get the shot, they, they will do no problem. So, oh, yeah. That's well, off yeah. to them. All of us should be extremely thankful for all those guys. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So, is that uh, kind of it? Yeah. That's it. So, hey, yeah. Thank we just, you. Yeah. We just want to say one more time, Aaron, thanks for your time. It was really good to hang out with you. And, um, I hope we could do this again sometime, right? Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening, and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Until, then. Until n next time. Could it be? Oh, yeah, girl. <laughs>